the deal came together in the last couple of weeks of the transfer window. Uh, but is a guy that had been on, on the radar. Uh, and again, you know, everybody watches the Gold Cup, so everybody had seen him play pretty recently. And uh, it was more the financial terms that were what changed than what came together at the end. Yeah. Was this sort of perceived in any way as, as filling a, a hole on the team, a, a point of weakness, or, or just a chance to get stronger? I, look, I think uh, Brad Evans has done a nice job at center back for us. Uh, this was a question of having a good, good player that became available uh, and a deal that we couldn't pass up on. Uh, and by doing it, I think it allows us to give it, it gives us a little bit more uh, tactical flexibility. We talked about that with the Valdez acquisition, that it gives us you know, the ability to play a couple different ways. If you have another big center back on the team, uh, you know, it gives you a little bit more flexibility to play a couple different ways. And, and again, my job is to give my coach options, and what he does with those options then is up to him. What is it like for you? I mean, having been involved in all these acquisitions lately, to you know see all these guys out here on the practice field finally, you know, after all the, the maneuvering. Hey, man, I didn't sleep for a week, so this is this is this feels pretty good. This it, it looks pretty good. It's it's fun to have these guys out here, and you know, to sign four guys in the transfer window is it's the most I've ever signed. I'm pretty sure it's the most the Sounders have ever signed in the summer window. So, uh, you know, now they have to to come out and get it done on the field, and we'll see how that goes. But uh, you know, the the message that I gave everybody in July is still true. Uh, the guys that are here have to get it done. And it's nice to have a couple more parts and a couple more guys that can come in and compete for spots. Um, but certainly those guys are not all going to be out on the field on Sunday. Uh, and it's probably going to take a couple weeks to get guys up to speed, both tactically and, and technically uh, and fitness-wise. And you know we need the guys that are here uh, to get the job done in the short term because we got to stay in the playoff hunt. What's the conversation been like this evening over the last couple of weeks about bringing in all of these other potential weapons for him? I think we, you know, we recognized that we hadn't performed at the level that we, we expected and we had to make adjustments and then the conversations are about how to make those adjustments. So um, Ziggy's been really good to work with through the window. Uh, we've obviously been, been pretty active and pretty busy and uh, again, hopefully now he's got some more choices and, and you know, what he does with them is, is going to ultimately lay with him. Have there been any conversations coming down from you or more Ziggy with the current players about bringing guys in here and keeping the competition? And I mean, has there been any concern with the current players about losing spots or what does this mean for them kind of a thing? Speaking as an ex player, there's always a concern uh, for losing your spot, and rightfully so. And, and uh, you know, that's why I've been careful to say these guys are going to come in and compete because that's what they're going to do. They're going to come in and compete, and uh, nobody's anointed or been promised anything. Uh, we're going to come in, and the best team's going to play, and the best players are going to play. And, you know, unfortunately, for the last couple of months, uh, we've not had great performances from some players. And that is what it is. And the players make the decisions. And, and I think I was up front and forthright that we wanted to go with this group. This group wasn't able to get the results we wanted, so we had to we had to change it. What is it about Torres' skill set that strikes you most? Um, he's a large man. Uh, he is uh, he's he's physical and he's imposing and he's intimidating. When you get up here, check out his tats a little bit too. Uh, you know, I think uh, he's he's he's. He's pretty good. He's pretty athletic, and, and we're pretty happy to have him. He reminds me of a, a center back that I signed a couple years ago, uh, who uh, you guys might know by the name of Hamasen Olave. So not quite as fast as Hamasen was, but uh, I think to have that kind of intimidator, that kind of protector in front of your back line, in front of your goal, um, even in front of your goalkeeper, speaking as a former keeper myself, you want a guy like Roman on your team. How's his English? I know that you've sort of used that as sort of what will ease some of these other guys in. How's, yep. how's his English? Yep. Yeah. The, for the for the first three guys, Freiburg, Gavonchitz, and, and Valdez, all really good transition candidates. Uh, for Oman, he does not speak a word of English, uh, so that one's going to be tougher. And uh, part of what you hope is, uh, you know, you got a really good group around him. You got a veteran goalkeeper behind him. You got a veteran center back next to him. You got veterans in front of him. So hopefully that gives him the structure where he can figure out how to play. And, and honestly, tactically, center back is pretty common. The, the concepts are going to be the most similar from team to team playing center back than any other position. So um, we're gonna we're gonna equip him as best we can. We're going to get him English lessons, things like that. But um, part of it is we think Roman's a really good player. And if he's a very, if he's the player we think he is, then we think he's, he should be able to adjust. Yeah, and you've spoken about being cautious about bringing guys in in the summer window before. Yep. Um, do you think that, that he's going to be able to transition smoothly, or is he maybe more of a signing for the future looking even beyond the, this year? Certainly he's a guy that I think is going to help us long term. Uh, you know, we, we, we don't do this deal if, if, if he's not. You know, he's a TAM player, so he's a significant investment from us. Uh, and as a result, he has to help us not just this year, but in the future. So, uh, I do again, I think it's a good bet. Uh, if you grew up in Panama, I've been down to Panama a couple times playing Champions League. Um, a lot of Panamanians are 
there's still a lot of American influence down there from uh, back at the time when we controlled that space. So, uh, you know, Roman doesn't speak English. That's that's going to make it a little bit harder. Uh, but he's certainly been in the United States a whole bunch with the Panama national team. Uh, certainly has a lot of connections. And, and you guys can ask him, you know, about how his transition might go. Uh, but, but yeah, if you look at on paper, is his transition possibly more difficult than the other guys? Yeah. I think it could be, yeah. um, and we're going to try to help him a little bit more, and, and uh, you know, do everything we can to make him comfortable. With Brad playing in the midfield this past weekend, do you still project him long term as a center back for you guys? Those are Ziggy's decisions. I give him choices. He makes a, he makes the choices. Is this the final acquisition that you were going to go after this season, or are there still possible things in the works? Um, you know, the roster freeze is September 15, so uh, you could see us possibly do something, but I. We've spent a fair amount of money now, too. Uh, we were able to do a lot of this because uh, my predecessor, uh, happens to own the team, was uh, pretty conservative in the offseason and kind of, you know, I, I, I owe him a tip of the cap because he was, he, he preserved a lot of resources such that when I came in and when I kind of had enough time to get my feet under me and, and assess the team that uh, I'd be able to make some changes if I wanted to. And uh, we obviously saw circumstances that dictated those changes and um, we had the resources to make them and, and it's because the team was, was well managed. But that said, we also have to be responsible what's left of the money and such that we can field a good team next year as well. Garth, you got a bunch of new international players this summer. How are you going to ne negotiate the international player limit? Uh, we got enough spots. So, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, we have, we have, I think, nine internationals now and we have, uh, we have the limits eight and we have a guy on DL who's an international player. So that gives you the nine and, and uh, so it's, it's, it's there. Despite his language barrier, what does it mean to bring in a guy who's been as this captain of this club and his country? You know, I think, you know, we, we talked to him about, Roman, about this directly, that, that uh, when all the nonsense went down uh, after the Panama uh, game in the Gold Cup, uh, you know, we thought he was the one calming voice. If you go back and you watch that tape, Roman was the one that was controlling his teammates and trying to, to mitigate some of the, the craziness that was going on. So I think he's going to be a good leader. I think he's going to be a good guy. You know, I'm excited for you guys to meet him because I think he really adds something that our team didn't have before in terms of a physically imposing presence in the back. Uh, and I think it's going to change the way we play. And, and I, think it's, I think it's a huge step forward for us. With roster space, did you have to put anybody on the DL or cut anybody loose to fit him in? Got three guys on the DL now. So we had two before. We had Roman. We had a third guy on the DL. Who was the so third guy? Damien, though. Okay. So anybody want, anybody want to talk about Avancic? Guy played 10 years in the Bundesliga. I mean, he said, said he's, he's pretty good. Um, good to finally have him here. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good to have him here. No one and I, and without being facetious, like, like he's a huge and massive addition to our team. Like he, He's a guy who's done it at the highest level. He's coming from Levante and La Liga, same place we got Oba from. Oba's done okay. Um, you know, I think it's a massive addition to our team, and, and I hope he is considered by the public in the same uh, light as Freeberg and Valdez and, and, and Torres. And obviously there's, there's a lot of hype and a lot of media around Torres, and I think he's going to be awesome. But Ivanchitz is a guy, man, if you look out here too, he's been training for the last two weeks on our program while we waited to get his visa. He's fit. He, looked, he, he might be, of all the guys we've signed, the guy closest uh, to being ready to come in and contribute. So, uh, you know, we'll see how that plays out this week, but he's an awesome pro. I'm excited for you guys to talk to him. His English is very good. Um, really smart guy uh, who's played, again, outside his home country, speaks English, all these things that we look at as good transition guys, and I think he's going to be a really impactful player for us right away. With Papa out, I mean, is, is he even more crucial to fill a role there? Absolutely. I mean, if you need a, a creative player to come in and make the game, you know, minus Papa, we were really hurting in that department in midfield. And so Avanchitz meets this need. The other thing that's really killer for Avanchitz is he's, he is masterful on set pieces. That's one of the strengths of his game. Uh, and if you think about what we've done, we've really struggled this year in some areas, right? Defending set pieces, we've given up more set piece goals than we did all, all season last year. And scoring set piece goals. I think we have two or three set piece goals all season. I'm pretty sure we're last in the league, right? We've now added Torres at center back and Valdez at forward, two guys that are menaces in the air and a guy in Avanchitz who can serve a ball. So why have we struggled for two months so badly? Because we can't grind out a result. We can't gut through a game. We can't get a set piece goal, even if it's not always so pretty. We've now fixed that too. And that's a huge, huge thing going into the playoffs. If we can make it, uh, that we've added these options and these weapons and through Avanchitz, a player who can serve that ball and make us more dangerous all over the field.